Hi guys, it's Andre from Convey of Random and Sand. Today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to edit a time lapse, whether you're using LumiFusion on a Mac Mini like this, an iPad like this, or, and this is the difficult one, an iPhone like this. So if you like to do a time lapse on a camera or even on your iPhone and don't want to use the iPhone's inbuilt time lapse facility, you can do so and you can edit all on LumaFusion whether you're on the iPhone itself, on an iPad or on a Mac like I will be doing. Obviously before you get to the computer stage you need to take those photos. Obviously all you need is a camera and I'll be using my Sony ZV-10 to take the pictures. You need the location, which I've got overlooking the city of Birmingham, through those pylons of course, and patience. And then once you've taken all those photos, you need to get them into the computer. I think I took about 200 in total. So let's get over to the computer and into LumaFusion. So the first thing you want to do is open up a new project. I'm going to call my new project Time Lapse. And I'm going to set it to 30 frames a second. That's pretty much what I record on. And then press the plus button to open a new project. So the first thing you want to do when you open up LumaFusion is get those photos that you've taken for your time lapse into the program itself. Now some people, if you've transferred those photos into your photo app, which you may have done on your iPad or iPhone, you'll find them by selecting the button up there and then selecting photos. And you just search for the photos there and just for the photos that you do want. But in my instance, I've put save them all onto a folder in the downloads folder. So I'm going to need to import those into LumaFusion. So I'm going to select linked folders and then add link to folder. And then there is that folder in the downloads folder. That's called time lapse. So I'm going to open that and then that's going to create a linked folder straight to that time lapse folder. So if I open up that folder, you'll see all my time lapse photos there. I think there's 200 of them. All of them are in that folder. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to select the amount of time that each photo is going to play on the timeline. So, so if we go in the, into the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you get into help and settings. And you under click defaults, you can see you've got this there. This basically tells LumaFusion if you add a photo to the timeline, how many seconds each clip is going to be of that individual photo. Now I've set it to 0 0.02 of a second, but some people may want it a little bit longer, some people may want it a little bit shorter, but I found that 0 0.2 of a second is sort of the perfect amount of time for this time lapse. So let me see if we change it. If we change it to 0 0.8 seconds, for example, and then I select all of these photos and then drag them all onto the timeline, so each of those photos is now 0.07 seconds. And as you can see, it's created a, a whole clip, which is 53 seconds long, which is a little bit too long for this project. And if I was to play it, it's a bit jittery. So I want it a little bit faster than that. So I'm going to take all those photos off the timeline. So I'm going to press the delete button. Go back into the help and settings in the bottom right hand corner. It's going to lower that down to you can try 0. Point, you can try 0. 0.01 of a second. See what that does. And if we drag all those photos onto the timeline again, certainly got a much better, more manageable length of video at 0. 0.19 seconds. But let's see how that looks. Not as choppy, but probably a little bit too fast, which is probably why I like 0. 0.02 seconds for this timeline. So I'm just going to quickly delete all those off the timeline again. Go to help and settings, change that to 0.02 if I can get there. So there we go. And then drag all those photos back on. And if I just press play again, it's a little bit better. It's actually where I'd probably want it for this project. So you may find that when if you're playing it through like this normally, if you're using an older iPad or an iPhone or an older Mac itself, it may be a little bit choppy in this section, but that's just due to the processor in whatever device you're using. On this, on this Mac Mini, it actually works out fine. It actually can process through all those photos really fine. And it's created a video of 13 seconds long. Now you can actually just leave it like that and then go into export, choose your export settings and then create a new video and then there you're done. 
you can individually if you need to edit individual photos for example you might want to so like here i've got it where there was a bit of light flaring from either the sun coming out of the cloud or the sun going back in the clouds so as you can see on the timeline certain images are a little bit lighter than the rest so i may want to take those out but i'm just going to leave those in just for the purpose of this tutorial so if you want to do any sort of group editing the best thing to do is select an individual photo And then select color and effects if you're not on it already select color and effects and you can let's just change something that's going to make a difference to all of them for example so if i go if i change this as i said you can make any changes that you want as you feel necessary that might make the photo look a bit better a bit more sharper i've all done this um pre putting it into lumen fusion so if you want to know how i've done this batch processed editing loads of photos with the same template in affinity photo just let me know in the comments below so if you go back to the batch editing in lumen fusion so i've picked this lin type color so if i go back to the main timeline you can see go to that and then the next photo is back to the original one so what i want to do is i want to make sure that all of my clips in the timeline have the same edit as the first clip in the timeline so what i need to do is copy the color of effects on the one clip and then paste them to all of the clips in the timeline so you do that by making sure that you clicked on the first clip and then this clipboard gets highlighted so because i want only want to copy the color and effects just make sure that's selected and if you have made any other changes then you can deselect or select more options on here but because i've made only changes to the color and effects i only want to select that so i'm going to press copy and then i'm going to go and press the multi-select button it's just easier dragging it all the way across from there all the way to the end so it selects everything in the timeline and then you want to go to your clipboard again and you can deselect these options but then you want to press paste and as you can see every single clip in the timeline now has that effect that the first clip had so if i was to run through this again as you can see everything now is that tinted greeny color but i don't want that so i'm just going to undo i'm going to undo twice so it's back to how it was originally and as I mentioned before, you can just export it there and you've got yourself a nice timeline. So if I double click on that, we can just run through it. It may not be the best, it's just showing you for this example on this tutorial. But you can see those clouds rushing by quite easily in the time lapse. I think it was taking over about 30 minutes or so and it's taken 200 photos. 200 photos over 30 minutes that it took to take, all condensed into a 13 second clip. So maybe you might want to add a sound effect sort of like of the wind going by so i found a sound effect on epidemic sound which i have already downloaded and it's in my in the downloads folder it's called windstorm cold 2. if i open lumi fusion again i just want to import media from finder because it's in the download section and i want to select the file and open and there you go it's added that file to lumafusion and i can just drag that down onto the timeline underneath and then you've got that sound effect of the wind going by now obviously the sound is a lot longer than the clip itself so i'm going to need to cut that short make sure I clip it in the right place. I'm going to zoom in, cut, and delete the rest of it. So it's still that 13 seconds long. And then when you're happy with it, you can just export the file. So I'm going to go to share export movie, and I'm going to save it in my finder. And I do like to export in the highest possible settings. So I'm going to go for 4K video quality ultra, and then leave everything else and export. I'm just going to call it time lapse. Let's zoom by as it writes the movie. And then we 
can save it. So I'm going to save it to my downloads folder. And if I go to my finder, I'll see it there, time lapse. And then I've got a completed time lapse overlooking the city of Birmingham through the pylon. So. Now you can get the gist of what I'm sort of going for with there. I mean, you can add whatever effect or sound effect that you want to this. Make any number of edits to individual or multiple clips. It might not be the best, but it's just that quick example of just showing you that how easy it is to do a simple time lapse on your phone, on your iPad or on your Mac like I'm doing it, or in LumaFusion. Hopefully this video shows you just how easy it is to create and edit a time lapse in LumiFusion, whether you use an Apple Silicon Mac, your iPhone or an iPad. I have added a few more time lapses in videos that I've done over the last couple of weeks and it's, it just shows you just how easy and simple it is just doing it all through LumiFusion. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.